So the Hammerlock DLC for Borderlands 2 is sort of the black swan of the campaign DLCs, mostly because of its length. After all, you can beat the vast majority of the main story within two hours, and the rest of the side quests can also be completed relatively quickly. However, one thing that I think the Hammerlock DLC got right when compared to the other campaign DLCs was the new weapons and gear that it added. And while it's true that other DLCs also add some insanely powerful weapons, the Hammerlock DLC added two of the best shotguns in Borderlands 2 and one of the best assault rifles. So today, I'd like to go over what I think are among some of the best weapons that were featured in Sir Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt DLC. But I guess without further ado, let's jump on in and discuss number 8, and that's going to be the Hawkeye Sniper Rifle. So the Hawkeye is known for its abnormally high critical hit damage, and it's also known as being a long-range sniper rifle in the sense that it has above-average weapon zoom while you're aiming down the sights. However, arguably the Hawkeye's greatest drawback is its base damage, which is definitely far lower than average. So while the Hawkeye does deal excellent damage upon scoring critical hits when compared to other weapons, if you do miss, you're going to be dealing far less damage than you would be if you were just using a regular non-unique Jacob sniper rifle. The Hawkeye's low base damage is also what prevents the weapon from scaling well with Zero's critical ascension. In fact, you'll find that most other sniper rifles are usually a better choice if you've obtained a sufficient amount of stacks. But if you don't have critical ascension and you're not playing as Sniper Zero, you might be able to get the Hawkeye to work pretty well on other characters. If you decide that you do want the Hawkeye, you are going to need to defeat Verastus in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode. And while that's a steep requirement for what is a somewhat lacking sniper rifle, if you can get a Skookum Hawkeye with decent parts, then you may find that you actually like the Hawkeye quite a lot. Number 7. The Infection Pistol Conceptually speaking, the Infection is one of the more interesting weapons in Borderlands 2. Unlike most weapons which deal the primary bulk of their damage from the initial projectile, the Infection has a very high elemental effect chance combined with very high damage over time. So the idea is to simply tag enemies with the Infection and allow all of the corrosive damage over time effects kill them rather than just kill them with the bullet outright. So ultimately, you're going to be killing enemies with the corrosive damage over time rather than the initial bullet. But as far as who can make the best use of the Infection, it's hard to say. Axtant can improve the weapon's damage via skills that boost grenade damage bonus. However, Maya can achieve a near 100% chance of causing a corrosive damage over time effect, assuming you have 10 out of 5 points in her flicker skill. The only real disadvantages to this weapon are that it's somewhat cumbersome in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode. Because enemies have so much health regeneration, you may find that it takes longer for the infection to get kills. Plus, there is also the fact that the infection only comes in corrosive elements, which limits its potential to only armored enemies like loaders. But if you want to obtain an infection pistol, all you have to do is just go and buy one from the Seraph vendor located in the Hunter's Grotto Lodge. Number 6. The Rough Rider Shield while this is definitely not a weapon, the Rough Rider is a very unique shield that presents the potential for players to greatly improve their damage output. And while having some damage resistance and having a decent increase to maximum health is nice, what's truly valuable about the Rough Rider is that it always has a shield capacity of zero, and is technically always depleted. And because the Rough Rider is always depleted, you can use it in a couple of interesting ways. For characters like Axton, Zero, and Maya, some of their skills like Axton's Crisis Management, Zero's Fearless, and Maya's Fleet will always be active. So provided you've spec for these skills, Axton will always have a flat damage bonus, Zero will always have a constant fire rate and gun damage boost, and Maya will be able to move incredibly fast. Other characters have great synergy with the Rough Rider as well. And perhaps one of the better examples is how the Rough Rider can be used to trigger Salvador's Inconceivable more frequently, thus increasing the potential for money shot chains, as well as just more times that Inconceivable procs. 
Melee Krieg also has pretty good synergy with Rough Rider. Not only do certain skills like Feed the Meat, Empty the Rage, and Embrace the Pain get optimized, but you may also find that the increased damage resistances, as well as the boosts to maximum health, are equally useful as well. But in order to get this shield, you will need to defeat a unique Bullymong in Hunter's Grotto called the Bulwark. Uh, he's not too difficult, so I highly recommend that you farm him to get several Rough Riders for all of your characters. Number 5. The Elephant Gun Sniper Rifle Now, in the past, I've actually ranted on this gun pretty hard. A lot of my main criticisms of the Elephant Gun were mostly as a result of its frankly piss poor fire rates, its below average accuracy, and its lack of a scope. And I would still maintain that on most characters, you would be absolutely crazy to use the elephant gun, because if you do manage to miss, you're absolutely screwed. However, the elephant gun can actually be fairly useful on Zero, as he can negate some of the elephant gun's more undesirable flaws. When it comes to accuracy, this can be offset with Zero's at one with the gun skill, which can greatly improve hipfire accuracy, in addition to improving reload speed and magazine size. And you can also obtain crosshairs for the elephant gun while deception is active, making you far more accurate while aiming down sights. And while there isn't a way to truly improve fire rate, entering deception does help offset some of the vulnerability of having such a low fire rate. Otherwise, when it comes to damage, the elephant gun can be quite incredible in this department, especially if you're making use of critical ascension on zero. And you may also be surprised to find that you can take advantage of other skills like rising shot and be able to hold rising shots bonus longer simply because of the elephant gun's low fire rates. And at the very least, if you're playing Sniper Zero and you get bored, I highly recommend that you give the elephant gun a try. To actually obtain an elephant gun, you will need to defeat an enemy named Arizona during or after you've completed the Egg on Your Face side quest. Number 4. The Yellow Jacket SMG so, the Yellow Jacket is a somewhat overlooked weapon in the community that's actually pretty good, and while it's not as strong as some of the other weapons on this list, and does take some getting used to, the Yellow Jacket is capable of some impressive damage output. Unlike most other E-Tech SMGs, the Yellow Jacket's projectiles initially start off very slow, but gain increased speed as they travel through the air, and eventually the projectiles will turn invisible, However, they will continue to gain speed until they hit a wall or some other type of surface like an enemy. Now, the Yellow Jacket is fairly good on all characters. Maya can make great use of it thanks to her Cat class mod. Axton can make great use of it because he can boost its damage with grenade damage bonus. And you might be able to use this weapon on Gage due to some of her skill synergy with shock elemental weapons. I'd say the only real downsides to this weapon are the shock elemental exclusivity and the nature of how the projectiles move. Uh, the projectiles can be a little awkward at first, but if you kind of just mess around with the gun, you'll eventually get used to it. And as for that shock elemental exclusivity, I've got a feeling that if the yellow jacket came in just more elements, it would probably be used a lot more especially if you had a fire and corrosive variant. Now, if you would like a yellow jacket, you're going to have to defeat an enemy named Jackenstein, which is an enemy that you will encounter towards the very end of the Hammerlock DLC. Number 3. The Twister Shotgun so the Twister has got to be one of the best shotguns in the game, and a lot of this is due to its unique projectile pattern, which resembles a Twister or a Tornado of sorts. Basically, the projectiles circulate in a sort of column formation, and these projectiles can hit enemies and deal massive amounts of damage. What's also pretty great about this particular weapon is the fact that the Twister is a Jacob's weapon with an elemental capacitor. So not only are you getting the enhanced critical bonus that's innate to most Jacob's weapons, but you're also getting this on a weapon that's shock element that can receive significant damage increases from shock elemental damage bonuses from either relics or skills. And while it's definitely up for debates on who can use the Twister the best, I think it truly excels on Gage, and part of this is because Gage has a lot of skills that boost the effectiveness of shock weapons. And unlike most other shotguns, the Twister's accuracy doesn't suffer quite as much from having a high number of anarchy stacks, because accuracy buffs and debuffs 
don't affect the grouping of the twister's projectiles. And this means you can fire relatively accurately at 200 anarchy stacks while simultaneously receiving massive damage boosts just from having that many stacks as well as having a significant amount of shock elemental bonus provided by skills like wires don't talk and of course your shock bone of the ancients relic. But if you want the twister you're going to need to spawn omen omen doc or just triple o for short and this is done by using a witch doctor to level up a badass savage three times and once triple o has spawned you can defeat him for your chance to acquire a twister. Number two the lead storm. So the Lead Storm is an excellent, if not incredible, assault rifle in Borderlands 2. And what makes the Lead Storm so awesome is that it's similar to the Hail Assault Rifle in the sense that the Lead Storm's initial projectile splits into more projectiles after a certain distance. However, unlike the Hail, which splits into just two projectiles, the Lead Storm splits into three that are generally easier to hit enemies with. And having spawning projectiles like this presents some noteworthy advantages. For example, the Lead Storm fires unlisted projectiles that can receive full amp damage from the Beast Shield. However, instead of it being just one additional projectile, it's three. So, as you can imagine, this can be insanely powerful. And given that you've got the spinning gun barrel and the lead storm, you can have so much lead, as it were, going down screen with all of these amped damage shots, and you can deal insane amounts of damage. The only thing that would really make the lead storm better is if it had some of the hail assault rifles attributes. For example, the critical bonus, the potential to deal splash damage, and of course the ability to heal off of the damage that the player deals. But even without some of these attributes, I think you're going to find that the lead storm is capable of far higher DPS. Perhaps the best part about the Lead Storm though is that you don't have to kill Verastas for it in Ultima Vault Hunter mode. Instead, as long as you have enough Seraph Crystals, you can simply just buy one from the Seraph Vendor located at the Hunter's Grotto Lodge. And finally, number one, the Interfacer. Now, depending on who you ask, the Interfacer is considered to be the strongest weapon in Borderlands 2, and I would actually be inclined to agree, provided that you're playing as Salvador and you have the right build and gear to go with it. The main reason the Interfacer is so powerful is because of its excellent accuracy, both while aiming down sights and hip firing, its fairly high projectile counts, as well as some unlisted projectiles that it fires, but perhaps most importantly, its amazing high critical hit bonus. In fact, the Interfacer has a much higher critical bonus than either the Conference Call or the Butcher, which are also fantastic Hyperion shotguns. These attributes make for an excellent raid boss killing weapon. In fact, I would say the only other weapon that comes somewhat close would be the Unkempt Herald, and even then, I think you'll find that provided you can land consistent criticals, that the Interfacer will end up dealing much more damage. With all of this said, the Interfacer does have a few downsides. If you're playing any other character other than Salvador, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to have to deal with the massive amount of ammo consumption and constant reloading while firing the Interfacer. Now, Salvador can get by this thanks to the fact that he regenerates ammo while gun zerking, and he has skills that allow him to fire shots that just don't consume ammo. For all of the other characters in the game, I would actually recommend that you use the conference call from Borderlands 2's vanilla game instead, as it doesn't have the ammo consumption problems that the Interfacer can potentially have, and it has some of the same properties. Regardless, the Interfacer is an amazing shotgun, and if you want this particular shotgun, you're going to need to defeat Verastus to obtain it. And while Verastus may end up being the most powerful raid boss in the game, he arguably also drops one of the game's greatest weapons, so I would say that it's worth it. But alright guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.